And at this point, everybody knows what the uh, reason Black Youngster's involvement is. We all know that he dropped that song with 42 Doug called Threats. And even before that, he had that song where he was in front of that Thornton Memorial at, at the grave, like a tombstone or something in the background. And that's a Thornton. And that's the same last name as Dolph. It might not have been his um, actual site, but it was showing what it showed. So don't think that was just an accident. Like they had went there for no, uh, for some other reason. And it just happened to be that same name in the back. And then we all know 42 Doug is CMG. That's why he went to the West Coast to do a show. He got pressed. He got knocked out in a casino because he was CMG, basically. And nobody was messing with him. And you all know, everybody say, uh, great, you know, Grape Street, Big Moochie Grape, is Blue Dolphins, is Five Life. That's all West Coast lingo, meaning that they tied to the blue side, potentially. Like, don't quote me on that. It's all alleged, but it it kind of leads that way. And so when 42 Doug went out to the West Coast, them dudes in blue seen him, and they quickly pressed him. I'm talking, they went immediately to throw hands. The security almost got themselves knocked out. I mean, it was people flying all over the place, like, Dude's bodies was getting thrown left and right. 42 Doug is very, like, he's, he's like, pretty short. And he's not that, like, he's not that, like, built. So they were ragdolling him. Rat mopped the floor with his uh, dreads or his twists. Basically, that's what happened. And so we know now, we all knew from the beginning, Black Youngster has something to do with it. Like, he can't just hide off that doing the diss everything i mean and the fact that people said they seen him in that parking lot too is the crazy thing because how are you gonna be seen at the parking lot but they not even asking you any questions like with all them paperwork that's going on they basically emptied out young Dolph whole like his whole everything that he owned everything that he possessed like you have to understand that since this happened no one has even brought up the fact that Black Youngster literally bought a home right down the street from Young Dolph old house. So you have to look at the fact that why is they even playing games like this? Young Dolph had a lot of people that was in his camp, but it seemed like no one's basically riding for him. But you got to understand, Makita's act like they didn't even know him. After that happened to Young Dolph, she acted like he was just a person who just come through every now and then two or three or four times out of the month that she just see she built a relationship with just off of basically like seeing each other every day, him purchasing things. Exactly. And they try to be brand new after that and be like, it was so senseless, this and that. It was he was just a good you know, customer, and there she started saying, she started saying he was like family. He 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 was almost like family. Not that he is family. Exactly. So pay attention to the receipts and the words that's coming out of her mouth. She people's my, brains and minds work a, a certain way when they're under pressure. So some is called a fru, fruidian slip. Any psychology people would know that you, when you under pressure and somebody asking questions, you will end up slipping and saying some words for what's really going on in your mind versus in reality, it sounds so weird. And that's why people always second guess it. Like, why did she say that? Because she accidentally slipped the he was like family and not that he is. And then that kind of stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Indicating that they have no relationship basically it's up for grabs like anything she get from him or if she talked to him is for ulterior motive it's not for basically genuineness it's she has a hidden agenda like you have to understand she said what she said and she meant it 
and she's sticking with what she's saying. You have to understand, man, this was a big, like a big play. Like they, they did what they did. And you don't see, you don't see the brother coming up all in everybody's chats, everybody DMs, making his own pages, Jamaica. Th you don't see the brother doing that. The fact that Raven's doing that, it's like she's trying to um, steer that narrative to stay, like she's trying to clear that narrative so it's always something different and that the people don't actually find out what she was doing and what she was planning. Like a guilty person, they never leave it alone. They always commenting back, back talking, back talking. If you were innocent, you wouldn't need to back talk because you would just be like all the other people who don't talk about it. That's actually innocent. Like, let's just say, for example, um, Let's just say, for example, one of the people in Family Dollar, right? If a Family Dollar person seen somebody, right? And it's all this speculation saying Family Dollar in on it, this and that. You don't see the Family Dollar people coming up on your pages and saying, this is da, they're lying, da, da, da. And, and then they, but then you don't see the Family Dollar people saying one thing and then saying, oh no, uh, I thought that sound, I thought I heard somebody say this, but it was something different. Kind of like what Raven did the with the Stay With Me Dolph and her dad and the words that she said that her, her dad say. Because she basically made, made it seem like at the beginning that her dad and called her dad called her first. Like she was the go to person. She was the person to go to when there's an emergency at the shop. You have to look at that. She said, oh, my dad said this, yada, yada, yada. I ain't going to repeat it. But then down the line, she said, oh, no, I thought that was one of the workers. And I thought the workers were something, Got they got a tour with a customer or something. And we've heard, we literally heard all the workers' voices. Like, we all, I know what they all sound like. And it don't sound anything alike because she's big time capping. She tried to say her dad voice sounded like the other dude voice that work in the store. If you listen to them Richard. talk into the uh, Richard, if you listen to them talk in, in their interviews that they gave, they literally sound like two different people. One of them got a deep voice and the other one got a high pitched voice with an accent. How is one of those, how could you confuse your dad with Richard, with Richard or a person that sounds completely different? So that's what I'm saying, man. That's the kind of stuff where if she was innocent, she would have left it alone. But the fact that she messed up and is, and is looking a little like she has something to do with it, that's why she keep going on and on and on. Because it's been other people who were mentioned and they don't come out and say nothing. Nobody comes out and said nothing. One of the people that got cleared, they got cleared. But when people were talking about them, they never they never came out on social media and doing threats, sending threats to people to uh, get them in trouble. So that's what I'm saying. If you ain't had nothing to do with it, you would have just brushed it off and been like, man, they're crazy. But don't actually fight fire with fire. You ever heard that saying before, you would know everything that this is about.